Welcome to the Captain's Run with the great Cameron Smith. What a week of footy. What a week of news. It just does not stop. Uh, we are here for Chemist Warehouse. Head into Chemist Warehouse for great savings every day. And subscribe for the Captain's Run, Apple, Spotify, or where all good podcasts are downloaded. On top of that, text 0457 736 736 to ask us your footy questions. Or you can even call in 1300 01 1170. Give us a follow on our new Twitter tr- Twitter profile, Captains Run and Roll, and follow at SEN League on Instagram and TikTok. Smithy, mate, how you been? Kempi, mate, fantastic. Another great weekend of footy. Um, some really good results, actually, across the weekend. Seeing some teams that weren't performing over the last couple of years or maybe even last season, you know, playing some great footy. The Newcastle Knights oh, wow. took the reigning premiers all the way to Golden Point. Took a fantastic field goal, of course. Um, in Golden Point from Nathan Cleary to, to get the win for the Penny Panthers. But great signs over the last couple of weeks for Newcastle fans. Um, the footy side, they're, they're playing a oh, just a, a really tough brand of footy, actually. They took it to Penrith. Mm. I don't think anyone really gave them a hope, but um, they were fantastic. Derby up here on the Gold Coast between the Broncos and the Titans, your boys, Kempe. Yes, get the job done. Well, they get got the, the job, job done. done. It took a well, it took a sin binning of I Tino Fa'asua Malaawi um for the Broncos to really just kick away in the end. But uh yeah, across the whole weekend some some great footy played. Mate, it's been absolutely fantastic and uh shameless plug, but the bloke brand new bloke two thousand and twenty three jersey. Oh. They're dropping on six PM on Monday. There is a limited amount. Once they are gone, they are gone. So that is Monday, 6 p.m., guys. Be there. Set your alarms. You go to bloke.shop. You can grab them. Uh, and also, I'm not sure what you're doing, Magic Round, Smithy, mm-hmm. but myself, Matty, Guru, Timmy, Tom, the whole Eddie, The whole Hello team. Sport, the whole team. We're going to be up on Caxton Street. Uh, sorry, on the Caxton Hotel uh, from 1 p.m., I'm pretty sure. So come down for a meet and greet. Say hello. <laughs> plus, <laughs> that could be a long day, mate. Oh, mate. It Cat was a the long Caxton. Day last time. Oh, it was a good day. Good day and a long day, which is a very rare combination. Very rare combination. Um, and plus, I'll be doing some stuff with the NRL and, and plenty of others on Magic Round. But let's get to the biggest news. Smitty, Jackie Wyden yeah. has confirmed his retirement from Rep Footy. What a bombshell. Where did this come from? Yeah, well, it, it sort of come out of nowhere. Well, whispers started going around. And when I first heard it, I thought, no, nah, there's no there's no way. There's yeah. no way he's going to you know, step away from representative footy. Only 30 years of age, um, you know, still playing some great football. Um, when he, well, when he's on the park, I know he's been suspended, but when he's when he's on the park, and let's not forget, only last year, Kempy, um, yeah, in game one of that series down in Sydney, where Queensland um, had a hard fought victory, they just snuck home in the end. He, in, in my opinion, he was New South Wales' best player. Mm. He was their yep. best player, and then they come into game two, um, misses out playing in game two because of COVID. Um, and then game three, he's left, um, I think he was 18th man in game three. So, um, yeah, it was a bit of a shock, I think, to everyone. But, you know, he stated his reasons for it. Um, one of those being that he wants to focus on winning a premiership, mm. which is uh, which is a big statement as well. So, um, yeah, look, you know, from a, from a fan's point of view, you know, we wish you know, Jack all the very best with, um, you know, his... Uh, you know his challenges now with with moving away from representative football. It gives him a lot more time to, as a, he mentioned, focus on trying to win a premiership, whether that's at the Raiders or elsewhere. Um, and he gets to spend a bit more time with his family too. So, um, well, from a, from a Queenslander's point of view, though, that's um, yeah, it's big news. I mean, look, I'll say it, it's a win. I, I would <laughs> rather a team yeah. without Jackie Whiten in it. I think he's. You know, we always talk about origin made, and yes, you yeah, know, exactly right. From, Especially from a Queensland perspective, yep. Like if he was a Queenslander, we would love him in the squad. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I said, mate. Like last year, game one, and game ones are traditionally sort of really sort of hard battle. There's not a whole lot of expansive footy play. It's it's really up and down through the middle third of the field, um, just trying to hold onto the football. And that's that's the type of that's the brand of footy that he's built for. And he was their best player. Like as I said, oh. I'll repeat again. In my opinion, I thought he was their best player in game one last year. So when quality players are unavailable, it, it's sort of it's it's a nice feeling. But in saying that, that look, that they've got a plethora, plethora of outside oh backs to pick from, and yeah. whoever comes in to to pull on that blue jersey, they'll um they'll do a good job. So 
doesn't make it any easier for Queenslanders. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> still got Latrell Mitchell, Tom Travojevic to worry about, Nathan Cleary. <laughs> to des- I mean, there's quite a lot. I will say it's uh, it's a really – what I loved about the fact that Jackie got to play Origin and play as well as he did is you got to see him in the kind of rugby league that made – the kind of rugby league that really accentuated how good he was because I feel like sometimes – you know, in club games, anyway, from a fan's perspective, mm. in club games, the physicality, yes, it's important, but it's not as important. When you get to origin, the physicality is arguably the hardest part of it. Mm. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so like him being, playing so well in that arena kind of, I guess, shone a light on his talent, whereas sometimes during club, you don't get that opportunity. Yep. No, absolutely, mate. And, you know, he... That's a style of player that he plays, and it, and it really suits um, that representative type of football. I'm, I'm wondering, I'm curious to think, though, because it's been raised, Would, in your opinion, would he have made that blue side in for game one? Whether it for be me, in the starting 13, in the outside back somewhere, or as a 14? Oh, mate, oh, it would have been, at, at the very least, a 14. Basically, I would have looked at my squad and said, okay, like, what do I want? What do we want? Is defence really important to us? If it is, I want Jackie White at six, and I want to win the game with defence. Yeah. Do we need more attacking flair? Do we need more points? You know, then I may go with Nico. Do we need cohesion? And mm. and we've got plenty of points in us. Then you go with Luai. I really do think, and I know that sounds like a, a fence sitting kind of answer. Yeah. But I really do think it matters what you're going for in the makeup of a squad. Yeah. Well, mate, that's 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 team sport, isn't it? Mm. It it's about who comp- complements. Um, one another. It's it's not necessarily. I I don't I don't subscribe to the theory that you just pick all the best players, throw them in there, and they'll get the job done. Mm. I th- I think it's actually well, you know, it helps when players are in form. There's you know, no doubt about that. That's that's pretty straightforward. But I I like picking players that complement the team game, mm. and they complement the players around them that that help, um, you know, emphasise their strengths. When they're playing in a footy side, not just not just going well, you know he's. Let's just pick seventeen of the best players available and throw them in there, and, and they'll just go and win the footy game. I, I just don't think it works like that. So maybe, you know, when we're talking about, um, you know, combinations and whatnot, and the chat at the moment, particularly around uh, Nico Hines and Jerome Luai, like who picks up the number six jersey for the Blues, you know, going going down that theory, I, I'd probably lean towards Jerome Luai. Given his his combination that he has with Nathan Cleary and the understanding that they each share, having not just play week in week out with each other for the Penrith Panthers, but they've been playing rugby league together since they were like fifteen. Mm. It's something like that, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So it's it's a combination and a relationship that has been built a long, long time ago. And you know, like this, well, you know, we can see from the games that they played and the results that they've had, particularly over the last few years, is that it's 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 a it's a combination that works and it's a winning combination also. Mm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's a. I think uh, people underestimate. It is a huge risk to throw in a new combination to start a series. Mm. To go, I don't know how these guys are going to play together, but I'm just going to kind of, I guess, wing it and go new combination, start the series, boys. You know, have a go, especially. And I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure whether this will be the case, but I'd be very confident that Queensland's uh, nine, six, and seven mm. are pretty settled. Like we know yeah. what we're going to get with that, and going up against that, and going, all right, well, we're going to make some changes now. Nico's going to jump in at six. Now, I do think that, I think Luai gets the first opportunity, but if he doesn't impact the game, I do think, and and obviously New South Wales lose game one, I do think Nico comes in game two. Yeah, right. Um, and they and they just go, you know what, we've we've just got to. We've got to try something different. We've okay. got to try something different. Yeah. But either way, what what a, an abundance that they have. I, I'm what I'm trying to say is is it's it's good for New South Wales the fact that they have the depth of the Dally M player yeah. that may not make <laughs> the New I mean, South Wales incredible. side. Yeah. 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 It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Um and so with Jackie White, he, he's basically the quote was this. He said it's one of the hardest decisions I've ever made. I'm very con- content as a man with everything I've done for New South Wales and Australia. Now I want to focus on winning a premiership and having a bit more family time. He also recently came out because there were, I guess, concerns that him being the best player on the field for New South Wales in game one last year, mm. then he got COVID, 
Then he didn't get selected in game three. There were concerns that he was a bit miffed by it. But he has come out and said, absolutely not. I love Freddie. He gave me my jersey. There's yeah. no drama there. I want to clean it up. But I wanted to talk to you about when he, he said, I want to win a premiership. Mm. But he didn't say what club. What do you reckon about that? Um, yeah, I guess you could... We could all speculate, really. Like, yeah. you could say, oh, look, open-ended comment about winning a premiership. Is is that cryptic that he's leaving the Raiders? Or does it does it mean he just wants to win one at the Raiders? Like, mm. you, you, you could go one of two ways, I guess. But I just think that it's, it's just a, a very black-and-white comment that he wants to win a premiership. And, and that yeah. having... Um, stepped away now from representing football like Origin and, and Test um, the, the Test uh, Rugby League he can now just concentrate exclusively on his club football and you know doing everything in his powers to help whatever team that is whether, whether it is the Green Machine or you know another club in the competition win a premiership that's mm. that's 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 solely his focus now. Whenever it, whenever and whoever he's playing with and for, um, he's he's all of his um, energy now is is drawn towards winning a premiership. Look, Smithy, I'm going to speculate the hell what? out of it. Okay, I'm just going to go out there and just so say, he's I gone. He's gone. No is information. He? Zero. Yeah, he's gone. No, <laughs> no. But what I will say, <laughs> what I will say, yeah. Again, it is pure speculation. But what I will say is interesting from my perspective is is when initially there was talk, is it about money, this next contract? Mm. The fact that he said, my goal is to win a premiership, there is a world now that I think he has put out there that he would be willing to take substantially less to win a premiership. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that he doesn't think he can win a premiership at the Raiders and he ends up staying mm. and his goal is maybe that's what he meant he just meant like I don't want to be playing Origin because I want to be focused on getting the Raiders a premiership yes but the fact that the premiership is his number one priority logically it says to me that there is a world where he could take potentially a pay cut to mm. go to a bigger club yeah. to win a premiership in the next few years yeah well maybe we've had we've had conversations on the captain's run on this show um, not just about Jack, you know, about other players uh, making decisions around their their future. That you know, contract offers at other clubs, and that when you are deciding on, particularly these guys getting towards the back end of their career, right, that haven't had the opportunity to win a premiership, and you, you at times you have to make a decision. Like um, if if you're lucky enough, like a player in Jack's position, where you can still command serious dollars, um, and you're a sought art, sought after player. Is it is it about money? Are you just are you trying to make as much as you can with the little time you've got left, or is it about finding a club where you feel as though you've got the best opportunity to win a premiership, but you won't necessarily bring in the big dollars that you'll get elsewhere? Mm. That's you know that's that's a that's the it's not a problem, but it's the it's the big decision that that some of these older players have to make um, at mm. the back end of their career is that if they haven't had that that fulfilment of Winning a premiership, lifting a premiership trophy with, um, with a with a footy side throughout their career, is it is that what they're chasing? Are they chasing mm. that feeling of of winning a premiership with whoever it is and and whatever club they feel they've got the best opportunity to do that at, or is it about well look, that doesn't mean as much to me as you know earning big dollars so that. You know, I can set myself up for the rest of my life. Mm, definitely, definitely. Uh, it's look. I've I've got to be honest, and this, I'm not saying this disrespectfully because the Raiders literally just want just beat the Broncos. So, you know, this is no <laughs> no disrespect at all. Yeah. But I, I must admit, from my perspective and in my opinion, the Raiders will need to recruit at least one or two players if they want to push to win a premiership in the next four years. Mm. Um, so, it'll be really interesting to see. You know, is that part of the discussions with Jackie and uh, the Raiders of like who are we recruiting? Yeah. What positions do we need to sort out? Mm. Um, so yeah, I guess watch this space with the Raiders. And I mean, it, I I personally hope he stays at the Raiders. If I'm being honest, I, I think he's a Raiders through and through. Yeah, well, that's where he's played his entire career. He's a young yeah. man started there. Um, yeah, like we said, mate, he's played nearly. Well, he's played every game for that club, and they've mm. they've come out publicly and said, listen, we've we've offered him, yeah, a million plus dollar contract. 
Mm. Um, so whether wow. that that sort of adds a little bit of sort of public pressure to Jack to, to sign and stay, I don't think it will, but um, maybe he, he might feel the pinch a little bit. Mm, absolutely. Now we're going to head to a break, and we have texts streaming in, absolutely streaming in. So we'll get to them. Mm -hmm. We'll get to plenty. I mean, look, I'm looking at the TV screen. There's a beautiful man. It's the great Kalen Ponga. He's back. We'll talk about that as well. We'll talk about Reese Walsh's form, which, I mean, I'll never not find an excuse to talk about Reese Walsh. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Let's have a quick injury wrap from round seven, thanks to Victor School and Sports Club Supplies. Visit victorsports.com.au. Smitty, what do we got? Can be a couple of big names in here, mate. Um, oh, no. The, probably, probably the biggest one of the lot, Jason Taumalolo. Oh, no. Knee injury. Couldn't get any worse for the Cowboys right now, but taking out their their leader, their their go-forward man, Jason Taumalolo, knee, four to six weeks. Uh, Jacob Kraz, our early Dally M leader, Jacob Kraz, he's wow. got a knee injury as well, three weeks. Uh, Nick Kotrick, uh, he's got a hamstring injury, as does Liam Martin. A few question marks around Liam Martin and sort of wondering what the issues are there and how long he's going to be out. So um, we'll just have to sort of hang five a little bit there and wait for some news. Brody Jones, he's got a uh, quadriceps injury. Keon Kaloa Matangi, another another oh. big name for the Rabbits. Syndesmosis, so the same injury, uh, similar injury to uh, the Fox, Josh Adokar, eight to ten weeks on the sideline with that one. And uh, Kelma Tuolangi, uh, he's got concussion. So he's out with concussion protocols from uh, the game last Friday against the Storm, which was a brutal game of footy. Mm. Oh, what a game. The Battle of Brookie does not disappoint. <laughs> Victor School and Sports Club supplies supplying school and sports throughout Australia. Visit victorsports.com.au. Smithy, we've got a thousand texts there. Hey, Kemby, we do. And... and, and uh, a lot of people have texted in after the little Jackie Whiten uh, conversation we just had. A couple of left field ones here for you, Kempi. Okay. Afternoon, boys. Here's one for you. I think Jack Whiten to replace Herbie at the Broncos for his shot to win a premiership. That's from PJ. I like I that. Think you I like hear, that's music to, to your ears. Lock her in, Eddie. I like it. Let's go. Let's yep. go. Uh, this one's from Jeremy. In the same week Whiten retires from rep footy, Sam Walker is dropped from the Roosters. Whiten... To the Roosters, question mark. They've got heaps of space under their sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you imagine? Oh, could you imagine? I'm, I can imagine the blow-ups if he went oh, there. Um, anyway. Uh, and got one more here, mate. I can tell you now, the Raiders will not win a premiership before Jack White and retires forever. Just my opinion, but I don't see them doing it inside of a decade or more. Wow. Wow. What are you seeing? I'm not seeing, brother. There you That's go. Some has he been watching their under-12s? Don't know. He, he must be watching under-12s going, nah, these guys can't win a premiership yeah. in 10 years' time. So there's a um, bit of a bit of, um, bit of of chat around the Jackie Whiten situation there. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I, look, 10 years, I think, is a bit hard to tell. Mm. But if you said to me right now with the current roster, the next two to three years, I don't think they have a strong enough roster to win a comp. Yep. But if you made one or two really shrewd recruits, mm -hmm. then I can see them uh, where, pushing to win. Where do, you think they're, where do you think they're short, mate? I Middle forwards, they, back line? Where, what are you thinking? I think they need Savage to bloom into a, a top-tier yep. fullback, yeah, and we're yet call. to see that. Yep. Uh, I think that Fogarty and White need to stay on the field for a long time, mm -hmm. and I think they need to find a number nine that can play 80 minutes at a top tier. If they did that, yeah, I could I could see them challenging for a premiership. Well, Warford, uh, Warford, Zach Warford, he, he's a quality like young fella coming through, uh, so I'm mm. sure he's going to improve. But as you said, mate, I, in the next two years, can they can they grab one with with what they got at the moment? I, I tend to agree with you. If if they are able to find a couple of top liners, absolutely, mm. yeah. It's, uh, I mean, look, the good thing is the milk, they're still in the fight. They're always in the fight, the yeah. milk. They can't help themselves. Yeah. They can't help themselves. If there's not a fight, they'll create a fight. We've got love. <laughs> That's what the league's all about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we actually got a text here, Smithy. Hi, mm. boys. When are we getting part two of Cam Smith on Bloke and a Barb? I think oh. a few bloke beers after the show and get it done today. The people need it. Oh, we'll get it done. Don't oh, worry. Oh, we're just we'll keeping them. Done. We're just keeping them hanging, aren't we? Absolutely. It'll be the most anticipated <laughs> podcast of all time. We're going to head to a break, and we'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with the great Cameron Smith. We're here for Chemist Warehouse. Heading to Chemist Warehouse for great savings every day. Now, Smithy, this next topic. 
really gets me blood boiling. Yes. I tell you what, if it was back in the day, I'd write a letter to someone angrily. And I'd say, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Rise in sin bins for 2023. 44 yep. sin bins from the opening seven rounds compared to just 28 in wow. 2022 and 16 in 2021. Of the 44 sin bins this year, 29 were for foul play, with 26 of those charged by the match review community. Mm. Um, the NRL head of football, Graham Annesley, defended the rise. The players have to comply. One of the frustrating things from an administrative point of view is that we still see players making decisions that are not necessarily in their best interest or the best interest of their team in hope they'll get away with something. What do you reckon, Smithy? Well, I reckon a lot. Yeah, well, listen, I, I think it's got out of hand, no doubt. And the impact it's having on our game... Um, is huge. I don't think a lot of people at the top, as in our administration, understand the impact it, it has on the games. Certainly from a fan's point of view, and I, you know, I sort of get around junior rugby league um, areas of the Gold Coast, and you know, in my travels, like through airports, and even at the at the stadiums, like pre-game and all that, like fans are coming up to me and just with frustration talking about, you know, um, the situation we have with sin binnings and how many there are and 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 how easily, how easily players are being put in the bin right now. I'll just jump to the the, the comments from Graham Ennisley though. Like Ooh. now he, he's 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 head of football at the NRL, and I can understand him coming out and and um, defending the position of sin bins and and the amount that we've seen over the the first seven rounds of the competition because th- that's his job. All right, that's his job to do that, because and and, but at the same time, he also came out and defended, just just on the weekend, he defended the penalty blown against Tyson for self for hair pulling. So do you understand what I'm what I'm saying? Like like that that's just as his position as his role of head of football at the NRL, he has to defend the referees and and the game that we're watching right now. Everyone, every single person that has seen that tackle from Tyson Rizal on Jerome Luai, they they know that's not a penalty. Mm-hmm. But still, Graham Annesley stands in front of the cameras and in the media and defends that it was the right decision. It wasn't. It, it was a ridiculous decision to penalise him. Mm. But anyway, back to the sin binning stuff. I just think that, and I made the comment um, after the Storm uh, Manly game on the weekend, that I, I feel as though our officials, they're... They're jumping at shadows at the moment with all this hip drop stuff at talk at the moment, um, you know, late shots, which some are blatant and very black and white that people need to go to the sin bin. And, and players are aware of it. They're, they're aware in particular of the late shot. Um, you know, when halves go to the line and pass the ball and after they've let go of the footy, you, you whack them in the back. Like, they, they know that that's a sin binning offence, but yet players are still doing it. When the black and white stuff, I'm okay with, but... When we're just, when we're sin binning players, just it looks like for the sake of it, oh, it just it's extremely frustrating. And you see, you see how quickly games change, mm. how games change when teams lose um, a player. Like perfect example on the weekend, uh, Tino, big Tino Fatasu and Malawi from the Titans, he gets sin bin. I think the Broncos went and scored three tries. Now they they may have gone on and won that game in the end anyway if he stayed on the field but that just shows the impact that it has on, on footy sides and how quickly it happens Mate I, I honestly couldn't agree more there's a, there's a couple of things here that, that really frustrate me first of all for him to come out and say the players have to comply one of the frustrating things from an administrative point of view is that we still see players making decisions that are not necessarily in their best interest or the best interest of their team in the hope they'll get away with something I d- Look, maybe Graham's played rugby league before. Maybe he has. That is such a blanket statement. When you're in the heat of the battle, <laughs> do you really think a lot of these blokes are consciously thinking, oh, you know no. what? I'm just going to do something stupid here. And, and, and they won't see it. And they won't see it. Now, look, <laughs> are there some players that do stupid things? For sure. And I just think it's an out of touch. And I look, I just want to say, Graham Ainsley has a tough job. And yep. I think we both agree it's a tough job. He's got the pressure of the media, the players, and he's just, from his perspective, his intentions are good, mm. for sure. Uh, there's no denying that. But I just think it's an out-of-touch comment to make because, mate, on the weekend, 
play nearly got si- so so someone got ran off the ball allegedly. Mm-hmm. Spencer Linu was in the bin before the ref even knew what happened, and it took a Penrith Panthers captain's challenge to stop him going to the bin. Yeah. And you're telling me that it's all just the players making these bad calls. No. Like, oh, the players need to just pull their heads in. It's like, yep. what I, with that, I feel like saying, mate, maybe you guys get stuff wrong and maybe we get stuff wrong. Let's, let's meet yeah. like halfway. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. Um, and so I just think that the sin bins, the invo- like, so people go, okay, well, players should learn rah, rah. The environment has in ch- has changed, so the impact of the sin bin is now different. So two years ago there were sixteen. So the impact, or basically what you're getting sent off for or sent for ten, was even to other things. Mm. Now, is it even that I late shot by 0.05 of a second to nearly kill someone with a swinging arm? Yes. Yet <laughs> they're the same punishment. Mm. I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. I'm I'm completely with you, and they've clearly, they've clearly changed, like their their thinking and of what is a sin binning offence and what's not over the last two years, because to go from 16 to mm-hmm. to to 44, quite a significant change. Quite a significant change. And and what's why have they done that? That's that's probably the the main reason. Why they do they do they feel as though it wasn't a a clean game that we were playing two years ago. Yeah. I didn't really see too much wrong with the game that we were watching in 2021. Mm. I thought it was a fantastic game that we were watching. Mate, and and and, and I like I said at the moment, and I think I made these com- I made these comments last week. I've I've never seen our sport. I've never seen our sport, the NRL, actively, actively, which goes to your point with the Spencer Lee new thing, looking. To penalise its players, it, 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 that's what it looks like we're doing. Instead of refereeing the game and just letting it flow, and then you know, um, acting on things that happen as it happens, it's like where someone, someone, someone's on the ground. Oh, someone must have must have done something illegal. Yeah. Um, yep. Oh, he just grazed his face. That's a penalty. High contact. Now nah, you can go to the bin for that. Like it's just. It's it's not what our game is. It's not what our game has been for the last 120 years. It really yeah. isn't. And and you, just the, the Spencer Lini one was such a perfect example. Like how quick he was to go, boom, yeah. in the bin, gone. It's like <laughs> it was almost like he was waiting for an opportunity to see bin someone. Yeah. And it's just like it just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, and like, what's frustrating is I feel like when when we say this stuff. People think we fall on the side of like, ah, the game needs to be tough like the old school, take each other's heads off. No, rah, rah. No, no, no. Absolutely not. No. We are players. We have, like, yeah. especially yourself, mate, you've been through mm. you know, four, over 400 games, but we're the ones that got our bodies damaged from the game. So if anything, we should care the most about yeah, players' that's right. safety. Yeah. Um, so I just, the, these sin bins, if they're going to do it this much, if this is the new normal, they've got to bring in a five-minute sin bin or something. Like, mm. it, or... They stay off the field to the sets end, and because games are just completely changing. Yeah, like, yeah. Change the whole game. And and, and yeah, just yeah. It's it's alarming, really. That's what it is. It's it's alarming the amount of people that are going to the sin bin. And I echo your your words there, mate. About um, we're, we're not saying let's go back to the dark days mm. where it's swinging arms and ripping hair. Like we've seen that vision um, <laughs> of like a game. I think it was back in the seventies, uh, trying to tear each other's heads <laughs> yeah. off, but. Uh, like it, we we know the game has come a long long way since then, and we understand yeah you know, about player welfare and player safety and all that sort of stuff. I I just think that ten minutes in the sin bin should be reserved for um, foul play, okay, um, intentional foul play, uh, and and also like careless and reckless um, actions, particularly yep. like tackles. So swinging arms where you hit someone like clean in the face, completely agree with that. Mm. Hitting blokes in the back um, late, completely agree with that too. But yeah. we're seeing a lot of like these small, small incidents where the referees are just, they're so quick to, to pull the trigger on the 10 minute sin bidding. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's alarming. And, and the, the tough thing is, is that 
if it was just one thing that we were getting sin bin for as players or, or whatever, you go, all right, look, this is just a major crackdown. They're trying to get rid of one thing. Mm. But it's like, I mean, I, I saw the other week, I think it was yeah, yeah, the Paddy Carrigan one where he just gave Tino a little little, little tap on, oh, his, on his head. Yeah. A little tap on his head. Yeah. It was a penalty. And it's like, what are we doing? We're playing rugby league here. Yeah. We're not playing. It's a tough sport. It's a tough sport, and it like a little bit of bant, a little bit of niggle. Like, what, what do we want? Do we want ratings, or do we want the the, the most mm. boring games? Out? Anyway, yeah. it's just anyway. Text us in oh four five seven seven three six seven three six. Are me and Smithy dinosaurs? Do we need to move with the game, or <laughs> do you think the sin bins are getting a little bit too much? Because uh, for me personally, well, it's, we it's do. Just, oh, mate, it's definitely getting. And I think like I just think it's being underestimated. Like. From okay, I get from a rest perspective, they're just getting directives from above. Yep. But it's not being appreciated enough that this is the livelihoods of all of these players. Losing games is catastrophic. Like yeah. it's it's not a small deal to lose a game. Can't be and mate, not just players, like coaches. Like look at the situation Anthony Griffin's in right now. Yeah. Like if he has yeah. a couple of if they have a couple of um cheap sin binnings going against the themselves or the, the dragons and they lose, like that could be his job gone. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So just, oh, anyway. Um, now, uh, I've got plenty of text here, Smithy. Hey, boys, does this mean the five-minute sin bin will make a return? Oh. Uh, what do you reckon? I, I, I think I think that then, I think that just creates more drama for us. Because if we bring that back and then someone gets five for an incident and then the game after on the same night or the same weekend gets 10, minute, 10 minutes for something similar, then will we... Up in arms about that. Well, he got five and then he got yeah. ten. Why is that? Leave it at ten. Leave it at ten. Mate, well, the, the only thing, the only well, reason why I'd say bring in five is if, if we are going to continue down this track of 44 sin bins, mm. at least we soften the blow of maybe 20 of them. Yeah. You know, like, but I agree with you. In a perfect world, let's just stop sin bin and blokes as much and make the 10 minute sin bin about stuff that actually should be 10 minutes that, in the bin. That's it. That's my point, uh, mate. That's my point. For sure. For <laughs> sure. Uh, hey, boys. Uh, add to your point, what can the NRL do to milking like what happened to Butcher and Nia Cordo? Uh, um, what do you reckon, Smithy? Um, well, I'll, it's a hard one because, you know, you, you sort of you don't want to be saying blokes are lying down um, for no reason and, and sort of questioning whether they are legitimately injured. But but I'll, I'll be honest, over the last you know few weeks in particular, I've seen a lot of guys lay down for penalties. And then as soon as there's a penalty um, blown, or if the referee walks over and says, mate, get up and play the ball or hand the ball over, they just jump up straight away. Yeah. But you know what, Kempi? That's been created by the NRL. Mm-hmm. There's no one else There's no one else that can take responsibility, responsibility other than the game. Yeah. They've, they've created this, this mess for themselves because they've taught the players that if you get a little graze across the face or... A, just a little slap across the chin, um, that's a penalty. Mm. And they and they know now that the bunker, if you lie down, bang, straight away, the bunker's onto it. What's happened? Something's happened. Someone's yeah. done something illegal. Some, someone's broken the rules. Mm. So they just lay down and, and wait for a penalty. Like, um, <laughs> on the weekend, it, it was, I, I had a little chuckle to myself, but like, Nathan Cleary, <laughs> getting, getting when he when he kicked that field goal in, in, um, Normal time before uh, Golden Point started, he got a he got a little slap across the chest, and then laid down and looking for a penalty. And then like there's there's there was something written during the week about oh that 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 could have been I think and Graham Annesley commented on that too on that on that situation. He said oh that could have that had the the potential to be a three point field goal. Like pl- come on, please! Like a little right. slap across. Like Nathan took the line on fifteen times before that kick and and got hit by big men, and just mm. bounced up. Mm. Like that's what we've created for ourselves. That that example there is a prime example. Yep, you've created that. They'd be crazy not to lie down because the goal is to win. So exactly. you're willing to do it. Uh, and we're talking about some of the the pound for pound strongest athletes in the country. Absolutely. The slap across the chest is putting them down on the ground. Come on now. Put it this way. If there was a try line and he hung an arm out like that... <laughs> he's running he's, through it. He's running straight through that. <laughs> uh, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we got a 1,000 more texts to get to. we got Kalen Ponga returns, and we got best hands thanks to Schnitz.
Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Thanks for the SEN app. Download it today for free in the App Store. Listen anywhere, anytime. Now, Smitty, best hands. Thanks to Schnitz. What do you got, mate? Best hands again, Kempi. One point this week goes to the young number six, the Broncos number six, uh, actually, Kempi. Your man, Ezra Mam. Mate, it's the, it's the uh, once again, yep. you come on the show a few weeks ago. Yeah, see, mate, we get them on and they just play the house down. Uh, Ezra Mam, he's lovely cut out pass. So actually, there's a great ball and a great finish by Jesse Arthurs. Um, to score in the corner against the Titans. Um, Ezra gets one point. Two points. Shawnee Johnson just keeps winding back the clock. Stop unbelievable it. unbelievable footy that he's playing at the moment. Um, regathered off his own kick uh, to set up Dylan Walker. Another another uh, experienced player playing some good footy off the bench for mm. the Warriors um, in their uh, win across the weekend. But three points. Three points goes to the Green Machines, Hudson Young. Uh, for his one on one on one strip of Zane Musgrove, and he ran what he run seventy or eighty meters oh. to score against the Dragons to get a good victory um, in the nation's capital. I love that effort. Hudson Young. The Hudson Young try was so good because he got, he breaks the ball, he scores a try, <laughs> he gets up, strapping on his head, blood dripping <laughs> down his face, and I'm just like, that's rugby league, baby. That's yep. rugby league. Uh, snitch bite into golden, delicious handcrafted snitchels. After the break, we'll wrap up the first hour. The fact that our producer, those are Roosters fans, brings joy to my heart that they're not in the eight. Uh, out of the four teams, currently out of the top eight, who jumps back in, Smithy? Oh, geez. Well, maybe the Roosters, if they if they get some sort of form going, um, some sort of consistency, really. But... Um, question marks over what's happening with their squad at the moment. Sam Walker, I know we'll move to that. Sam Walker dropped for this week's game against the Dragons, um, which is the Anzac Day clash, actually, in, in Sydney. I don't know, maybe, uh, like, do Parramatta go on a run and get up there? Newcastle last week, off, off their last fortnight, Newcastle have been pretty impressive. If they can find that form um, for the for the rest of this season, they're, they're a chance, but I don't know. The, the teams in the top, currently in the top eight, do they drop out? Like mm. Dolphins, Dolphins currently sitting eighth. Do they keep their spot in the eight over the next month or six weeks? Um, Melbourne, question marks around their form. A lot of people saying, oh, they're on the slide, beaten by a, a very aggressive team on the weekend um, in Manly. But they they get a big in uh, leading into this game. Big Nelson, Asofa Solomona, of course, back. Cameron Munster back to six. So there's always, you know, things moving, changing, and particularly... I'll tell you one thing that can have an influence and, and it was a subject that we were talking about earlier, Kempi, was like these sin binnings and, and charges from round to round. I'd love to know how many suspensions we've had. Mm. So we've had we've had an increase in um sin binnings, but the suspensions have been huge. Like, you know, every te- I'd say nearly every team is dealing with a suspended player at the moment. Yeah. Being being unavailable due to suspension. So maybe, you know, that has an effect too on on where these teams finish. But um for the for the sides that were in the eight last year that aren't in it at the moment, like North Queensland for me, they're they're the under underachievers so far. Mm. As far as like with their roster, um, with how we know they can play their football when they're at their best, like they're they're sitting second last. Mm. They've only won two games out of their seven this year, which is just it's to put it bluntly, like, it's not good enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Like for those teams that aren't that were there last year, then not there currently. Like, what are your thoughts of, mate? I um, I think the Eels are probably the most likely to get in the eight, and I know that they've been really disappointing. Mm-hmm. But I actually think I've seen more minutes of high quality football from the Eels than the Roosters this year. I just think the Roosters have they've maybe put together. Uh, 20 minutes out of maybe four games that I've gone, that's the Roosters Rugby League. Whereas the Eels have had the toughest draw to start the season Mm -hmm. and they've essentially been in every single game that they've played. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, look, that sounds like excuses for the Eels and I'm I'm not giving excuses at all. They should be in the top four right now if they are a top four, if they were to go off last year's form. So the Eels and the Roosters I definitely can see coming into the eight. Uh, unfortunately for the Cowboys, I've got real concerns about them this year, mm. and I uh, I am almost convinced that they won't make the eight this year. 
And that's coming from a guy that had them as a premiership threat yeah. at the start of the year. But Same here. looking at their numbers last week, I think against the Warriors, uh, they had... So this is the second time they've lost to the Warriors as well. Yep. They also had one of the... the you know, and this is no disrespect to their teams, but one of the easier draws, if you compare positions last year, of the competition. But I looked at their... So they last week, I'm pretty sure they had 40 missed tackles and only, I think, like maybe 15 tackle breaks. Mm-hmm. And what that says to me is that they, they are struggling in the contact. So are they either under-trained or over-trained or are they not wanting to be on the rugby league field? Mm. Because contact is... It's almost the main part of the game. You've, if you don't embrace the contact and you don't win that battle, <clears throat> you will be dominated by every side you play. You can have the best outside backs. You can have the best ball players. If you don't embrace the con- and that's my concern with the, the Cowboys, is, is that when you see stats like that where they're barely breaking tackles and also they're getting broken by mm. tackles, mm. that they're not embracing the contact. Yeah. So I'm concerned about either have they gone... Last year, the reason they exploded on the scene, yep. was it due to the fact that they had this crazy standard-bearing preseason where everyone got super tough. Have they repeated that and made themselves fatigued? Or did they get comfortable and not go as hard this year? I wonder which one is the, the kind of right answer. Yeah, well, it might be in the middle too, mate, because they, yeah. they a lot of their players, which many clubs are in a similar situation, but a lot of their players played um, in the World Cup. So they only they come back and they started playing uh, started training in the preseason in in sort of early January, so they had a a shortened preseason, a shortened build up, maybe you know six weeks to get ready for this. Compared to last year, where they had a quite a lengthy preseason, where Todd Payton and, and it's been um, said publicly by a lot of their players last year about how tough the preseason was and how he really challenged them mentally uh, to become stronger, a, a mentally stronger footy side, particularly when they're um, they were defending their trial line. So that that I agree with you. That that has been the main difference in their game this year is that um they ha- they they haven't been able to find a way to stop opposition teams scoring often. Mm. Which they were so good at last year. I know they finished in the top four um for like points conceded last year. At the moment they're well and truly in the bottom eight. Mm. There's really only one side sitting out to- outside of the top eight at the moment for um points conceded that that you could chuck in just on that stat alone and that would be the Roosters yeah every every other team sitting in the bottom eight are 150 plus points against mm. um, whereas you look at you know the, the, the better sides so um, Penrith they're the best team as far as points conceded is concerned they've only conceded 79 points this year against um, yeah yeah, and, and then they've only played six games, but the Broncos, they're next at 116. They've played seven, so they played an extra game. Mm. And and then, surprise, surprise, both teams first and second on the ladder. Yeah, it's it's almost like clockwork. You feel like you're just repeating yourself each year, like defence wins premierships. Yeah. Um, I will say, uh, we've got a quick test here, text here. Kempi, the Roosters beat Parra pretty easy. Um, yeah, but if you remember the game, what happened? Roosters came out, played incredible first half, and you go, wow, here are the Roosters. And then mm. what happened? Second half, they slid in like four tries in the last whatever amount of minutes. Mm. And so that's what I mean in regards to I've probably seen Para play more high-quality minutes at the moment than Roosters, even though I have Roosters more likely um, to like shake the premiership. Yep. I just think right now I've seen more... Uh, Para style rugby league, and I think the Roosters are still trying to find their way. Anyway, speaking of the Roosters, Sam Walker dropped. Uh, he's dropped for the Anzac Clash. Manu will play 5'8". Kiri at halfback. Uh, what do you think of this move, Smithy? Yeah, big one. I've heard this this morning, um, which I, I must admit I was I was pretty surprised because I thought he'd, he'd played some pretty good footy um, f- through the first you know seven weeks. And I, I know they haven't been at their best over the last couple, but I haven't watched their games over the last fortnight and watched Sam Walker and gone, I think he needs some time in reserve grade. I haven't, he hasn't been a standout for me. Mm. Like if, if you look at their game entirely, there's probably, there's probably more experienced guys in their team at the moment that need to, that need to lift. Mm. You know, like Victor Radley at the moment, wonderful player, love the way he plays, but you know, he's just got to control. Um, he's got to control himself with these continued sin binnings. 
Mm. We mentioned before about the effect it has on your footy side when you get sent to the sin bin for 10 minutes and, and how costly it can be. He's just got to he's just got to control himself a lot more than what he what he is doing at the moment. So so to point the figure at a at a you know a young halfback and say mate like I think you need to spend some time in reserve grade. Um, yeah, I, I think that was a little bit harsh, but at the same time, <laughs> we're not there. Yeah, you like we're not we're not in there. Um, we're not in their camp. They that must be the re- they see that's the reason. Um, all the way forward, particularly over the next little bit, and maybe maybe they think it's the best thing for Sam. He might be struggling with confidence at the moment. I'm to, I'm not too sure, mm. but but from a from an outsider looking in, watching watching their games, I I wouldn't have said the change that needs to be made to this football side is Sam Walker needs to go to reserve grade, and we have a reshuffle in the lineup. Mm. I just worry the message that it sends to the rest of the team, and I'll be the first to put my hand up and say when Demetrio hooked. Uh, Lockie Elias, and I, I thought that was a bad call. It ended up being a right call. So mm. I'm happy to put my hand up in a few months' time if Sam Walker comes back and kills it and they kill it and go, you know what? Robbo knew more than me. But like right now with the information I have, what I'm surprised at is the Roosters right now, they're actually one win outside the top four. So they're currently sitting on eight points and they've only played six, ga- mm-hmm. six games. Mm-hmm. And so if... If they were in a situation where they desperately needed to bank some points up to get into that top four, because history would suggest if you're not in the top four, you don't win the comp, Yep. then I could understand such an extreme decision. But they're playing the Dragons next week. And as we spoke about, as you said uh, earlier uh, before the show, it's surprising that they're playing the Dragons. And you know, you'd, you'd think maybe, maybe give the kid a chance to go, okay, mate, you're playing the Dragons. If yep. you're a top-tier half in this game, you should be able to dominate this game or at least get us a good solid win. Yep. And so that's what surprises me. They're not desperate, even though they're outside the eight on points differential, they're not desperate for points to make the top eight, uh, top four. Mm-hmm. Sam Walker has had three games in a row of great defense. And I just, I just think that with, if you're trying to send a message, wouldn't you do it with a bigger player? Yeah. Than Sam. Yeah. Yeah, which so, is my point before, mate. Which, yeah. you know, I, I see a couple of more experienced players in that footy side at the moment that could be playing a lot better than what they are right now. It, like, and to me, it didn't his form. It didn't particularly sort of send alarm bells. To me, watching them play, saying, "Oh, geez, he's out of form. He he needs to spend a bit of time in reserve grade to to regain some confidence and bring his best football back." I'd have been looking at some of the more experienced players and maybe not saying drop them. Like I'm not saying drop a, a Victor Radley. I'm just saying grab him and just say, "Listen, mate, like <laughs> we got to knock these sin biddings on the head mm. because they they're, they're not so much." They're not so much just part of the game, sin bins, where you go, oh, a little unlucky there, but I can understand what he was trying to do. They're just silly ones. Mm. Like the one on the weekend, he ran in to try and stop the play to get a, a captain's challenge. That rule has been changed. <laughs> a memo was sent out to every club um, before the season kicked off and said, you cannot do this anymore. Mm. You can't run in and intentionally stop the play to get a captain's challenge. You can't you can't gain an advantage out of doing that. If you do so, it'll be a professional foul. You'll be put in the bin. You, you know what? With the Roosters, I feel like, and and I know they would never they would never take this on vice on board. And you know what? Don't take any of my advice on board. But you know what? <laughs> Melbourne Storm did for so well <laughs> is when you guys were you know really in your dominant period. What I always I guess respected about what you did is you weren't you weren't actually you weren't hyper aggressive. You're almost hyper tough. Like mm. I, I would never went into a uh, a game against the storm and was like worried about blokes shooting out of the line, swinging arms, or all that kind of stuff. What I knew was it was going to be a like just a massive, massive grind. Mm. And I just wonder whether the roosters sometimes lean a bit too heavily into hyper aggression instead of hyper toughness. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, man, I, I yeah. completely get your point, and and I understand. You know, having played at Melbourne my entire career, that's that really was the way we played. We never really had a well, sort of every couple of years, we'd probably get a player that played that style of footy that, you know, a JWH or a Victor Radley plays where they like going out and being, you know, sort of intimidating to the opposition. But more times than not, it was more around being effective. Yeah. So you played you played tough and you played aggressive, but it was more, you know, the coach wanted you to be more effective than 
just trying to hurt people or intimidate mm. people, I should say. Yeah, okay. uh, it was more around you know being effective in your role. Still had to be yeah. aggressive with your line speed and your first contact and all that sort of stuff, but it was more about being effective and getting your job done and playing high percentage stuff. So maybe that's the way they they may need to tweak that a little bit, but at the same time, sometimes that's the reason why those particular players are playing first grade Kempi mm. is because yeah. of that that the way they play and, and that, that intimidating style of footy that they do play, that's the reason why they're picked to play first grade. So it's a bit of a juggling act, but yeah, just on that topic, oh, I think I, I would have given him at least this week. I would have sat him down and said, Sam, mate, we need a bit more from you. If you think he hasn't been playing well, just say, mate, we need a bit more from you. Dragons aren't going well at the moment. This is a game we have to win. If you can't show me that you're up to it at the moment, then I'm going to have to send you back and give you a couple of weeks out of it. Yeah. Uh, just yeah, really surprising because it's it's not like he hasn't been dropped before. You know, he's been sent back to reserve grade. Uh, I think it was either last year or the year before. Mm. Anyway, look, you know, to be to be clear, fair, I guess he's twenty years old. This kid, he'll come back bigger and better than ever, in my yeah. opinion. I'm sure you agree, Smithy. He's got a long career, mate. A uh, long, long career ahead of him. I mean, he's already played over, I think, fifty NRL games or maybe even yep. more, and he's twenty years old as, as a as a half, as a seven. I yep. mean. I think he'll bounce back and bounce back in a big way. Uh, we're going to head to a break. And after the break, we share our holy schnitz moments. Thanks to schnitz. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Now it's time for everyone's favourite time of the show. Everyone, like I'm, I'm hearing people yell holy schnitz in the streets, Smithy. Yep. Holy schnitz in the... What's your moment, holy schnitz moment of the round? Holy schnitz moment was... Uh, it was at Four Pines Park... I call it Brookie, but it's Four Pines Park now. And it's when Justin Olam tried to take a carry out of his own oh. end and re- he decided to run uh, straight at each shoulder of Aloye and Olakuatu and just got oh. absolutely hammered. Oh, wow. Hammered. Oh, my God. And I don't like, think I would have been the only one that said, holy schnitz. Like, oh, I yelled it. I yelled it. I, I could not believe it. Like, it, great rugby league tackle. Great. Yes. We don't see it much anymore. And I was like, I was, I was waiting for a sin bidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was waiting for a sin bidding oh, mate, because 100%. of how hard they, they, I was waiting for someone, the referee to say, mate, too much force in that tackle. You hit, hit him too hard. You're in the bin. Mm. But mate, I've never seen Justin Olam hit like that before. He's usually, he usually runs in there. And even if they got a good shot on him, he'd just bump them, make a few meters and get to the ground. But he got absolutely poleaxed. Polaxed. Love it. Absolutely love it. Look, I, I don't have a sports holy schnitz moment. I've got a, a personal holy schnitz moment, okay. Cam. Yep. And, okay. and the, the crew don't know what I'm about to say here. So right. I'm oh, just oh, hang on. This could be anything. <laughs> could be anything. This morning, I had a holy schnitz moment. Yep. So I went to the gym, and I'm sitting in the gym, and I get a message from my missus, and she's like, oh, no. there's a flicking noise in my car. And I yelled, holy schnitz, because I don't know anything about cars and she was expecting me to come fix it. And I was like, A oh, flicking man, noise. I don't know. I don't know, Smithy. She just said, there's a flicking noise. Can you come sort this out? I yelled, holy schnitz, at the top of my lungs and said, my wife's going to find out I'm not a man. So what was it? Uh, it sorted itself out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, footy gods. I just said, look, the car's it new. It sorted itself sweet. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, I said, the car's new. It'll be sweet. It'll be fine. <laughs> I just, you know, look, I just prayed to the footy gods and yes. they answered my prayers. And, yep. you know, 20 minutes later, she messaged me and said, yeah, the, the, no, the noise is gone. She's oh, all gone. good. Oh, excellent. So, well, there you go. Holy, that, was, that, that was my holy schnitz moment of the week. I was about to get divorced. Uh, <laughs> now... <laughs> <laughs> uh, got the winning taste right now. Uh, Schnitz handcraft and schnitzels made fresh and made just for you. After your after the news, we're going to get to your uh, texts and your calls. Uh, oh, actually, no, we got some texts here. Uh, oh, we got some Den- more. Denon, Big D Kemp. Wow. Big D. That's, def- that's definitely not the wife texting, that's for sure. Um <laughs> Uh, and Cameron, second to JT Smith. How oh, dare you, what? sir? Oh, come on. Wow. Uh, I hope you're well, fellas. Uh, Denon, question to you, mate. If you boys could th- pick any three players, past or present in their prime, to be the first picked in the next NRL franchise, who would you pick and why? Wow. Uh, well, I mean, Smitty's obviously got to be, be number one. Oh, thanks, mate. No, nah, no worries, mate. I'd go Smitty, I'd go uh, Lockie, and I would go... 
Either Thurston or Glenn Lazarus. Lazo! Well, he won so many premierships at different clubs. He must have been doing something right. Yeah. They reckon, um, they reckon like, in his young days, just an absolute beast. The brick. Yeah. The brick. Like, when he first come onto the scene, like, with the Raiders, they reckon he was just a beast of a player. Oh, mate. What about you? Who, who are you picking? Oh, geez. Um, I'd go JT. I'd go Billy. Um, ooh. Oh, the king. Wally. Wally Lewis. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Imagine yeah. those three playing together. You know, it's funny. Six, it's seven, one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we'll get to all the news. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. And now, when I was told uh, this next bloke was coming on the show, I jumped at the chance to speak to him. Uh, we have the great Charles Nigel Clockstead on the line. How you going, brother? Hey, soft boys. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, mate, how you going? You've had an incredible start to the year. The Warriors are absolutely flying high. You're back home. How's the how's the headspace for you, mate? Yeah, no, it's, everything's going pretty good at the moment. We've been able to rack up a few wins, which has been nice, and we feel like there's still a lot of improvement that we can do as well, so that's a um, good sign. Hey, Chance, it's Smithy. Mate, you, you rejoined the Warriors, of course, this season, three-year deal. What, mate, tell us, like, what was the main reasons for going back and, and how's it been so far over the first seven rounds? Hey, Smithy. Um, yeah, it was, I guess a big part was to try and play consistent NRL again. That was um, one of the reasons. Another reason, there's an opportunity that I felt was there when I was last back here, and that's to be a part of the first ever New Zealand Warriors grand final winning team. That'll be pretty special, and my boys moved back uh, a couple of years ago, so uh, that was another big reason. Mate, uh, what's it been like? You know, obviously Andrew Webster's come across, and it just it's so interesting to see outside looking in, you guys really just having this belief you know, I feel like sometimes you can go into seasons thinking, oh, you know, hopefully we make the aid or hopefully we can take it to the big sides. But it really does feel with the Warriors where you go, no, there's no hopefully. We can make the aid and we can make a push. Yeah, I think a big thing for me that I was really uh, impressed with when I first come back into camp was just him wanting the team to feel confident about their abilities and about our process as a team. And I think every every uh, every week that that message doesn't change, win, lose or draw. We He wants us to come out of every meeting being confident in our own abilities and in the game plan for that weekend. So I think that's pretty cool and I think that's where it starts. And, and mate, experiencing Andrew Webster as a coach for the first time for yourself, he spent a little bit of time at Penrith. You've do you feel as though he's taken a, a little bit of that that Penrith out of the Panthers and, and taken it over to you guys? Oh, I'd say it'll be hard not to want to take uh, things out of uh, the Panthers' side. They've been the form side of the competition for a couple of years. Mm. Um, so in terms of the detail, I, I'm not too sure yeah. what exactly he's, he's bought from, from their, their club. But I think the biggest thing, like I said, is, is the confidence in, in our abilities as players and I think that's where it starts if we can get you know each individual 1 to 17 feeling confident in their own abilities you know that's where it's going to come together collectively and mate like you've been at the Raiders over the last couple but um, for the Warriors boys that have been there over the last couple of years living away from home for such a long time do you feel as though now the team and the club particularly you know the players and the staff that spent so long over in Australia do you think that a, a, a part of the reason for you know the team's form is because you're a back home, you're settled, you're around family and friends, and just you know feeling a lot more comfortable in your surroundings. I'd have to say that's a a, a big part of why the boys are feeling so settled and mm. and really enjoying being at training again is because of that reason. And yeah. I never really understood the impact that it had on the boys until they started sharing. Uh, a few things about themselves as players that's something that we do uh, here and there at the club and a lot of them spoke about the impact of being away from their family like some of them Tulu Harris he's, he's a you know, family man through and through he was saying that yeah. his spare time 
outside of footy every single moment is with his family and for him not to be able to do that that was you know that just hit home and it was sort of like a wow it really did affect these boys and it must have been such a struggle for them and it's so good to see them back with their families um, and doing what they love Mate, at the Raiders, obviously, you know, it, it looked like that you'd get limited time in first grade. You go to the Warriors, you fight for your spot, you get it. Now, I'm sure you would have appreciated playing first grade before that, but was this really a moment for you to go, you just take a step back and go, you know what, like, I am going to do everything I can to make sure I'm in tippity-top shape to be in the first grade side every single week? Yeah, well, like you said, it wasn't really something that I thought I needed, but... It's definitely been um, every single moment that I've been able to put on that Warriors jersey, I've always, it, I just hold it a little bit tighter and take it in a little bit more because I have experienced what it's like to sort of be on the outer and it's, it's a feeling that I don't want to feel again and, you know, my time will come hopefully not too long but um, somewhere in the future where I'm going to have to transition out of, out of footy but while I'm in footy and while I'm fit and healthy and doing everything that I can do to play good footy, I want to make sure that I'm in that jersey for as long as I can. Hey, Chance, tell us about uh, one of the older boys in your side that's really just in some career form uh, for the footy side and probably a guy that you look, looked up to as a, as a young man um, in New Zealand, Sean Johnson. Just tell us about his form this year and, and why you think he's playing so well. I think it's, it's back to what Webby's brought and it's um, that confidence. I feel like he's just so confident in, in what he can bring to a side, and he's so confident in the game plan and everything that he's doing at the moment. And I feel like Sean's just, you know, he's playing quite simple with his game. Like, he's, he's running when he feels like he needs to run. He's passing when he needs to pass. And he's really kicking us out of, out of trouble a lot of the time in games. And I feel like especially against the Sharks, there was moments where they were step back and we probably could have taken that opportunity running, but not, nah, let's put it in the corner and, and let's, let's attack with our defense. So yeah. I think he's been driving the team around really well and um, I've really enjoyed being able to rub shoulders with him again. Mate, uh, it's essentially a, a new squad since you you know left and then you came back and I really, I desperately need to know, who's the pest? Give us some info, mate. <laughs> who's the pest? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I don't... <laughs> he doesn't That's want to give him up. up there, he? <laughs> he's, he's definitely up there, but man, the undercover pest is Ronald Volkman, man. A <laughs> Young he rookie. He sort of reminds me of, uh, of of Mason Lino, so he's hilarious. <laughs> he's stuck up. He's... The funny thing with Ron, though, he, he can dish it out, but once you give it back to him, he's, oh, no. Oh, no. He's a good laugh. It's good. We've got a good young bunch of boys coming through, and, and he's, he's at the top of the list there, fella. Um, and, hey, Chance, what about your... Um, you've played a, a handful of games at home this year. What about the fans, mate? Like, it's great watching on telly oh. the sold-out crowds, particularly at Mount Spartan. It's it's crazy, eh? It's it's so electric. Being able to uh, to play at Mount Smart again, it was sort of, you know, felt like a lifetime for me. And you know, a few of the other boys being able to experience a packed out stadium. And I think the Warriors fans have have sort of missed that a lot. So for them to be able to come in full force and and really get behind us, man, it's electric. Hey mate, so this correct me if I'm wrong. Is this um, this week's game? Well, sorry, you're playing next Tuesday, but. This round, is this your first Anzac game against Melbourne? Yeah, no, nah, first Anzac game I was actually. Yeah. Um, I was actually named 17th, um, 17th man <laughs> a couple of years ago. Uh, I was in the squad and then I got told on game day that um, oh. one of the 18th man was making his debut. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think I was like maybe third game in or something or looking at my third game in, but... Yeah, it's all good. One of the boys got the debut, but yeah, first game. Oh, good. Well, well, mate. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Everything you stay healthy and you get across there and, and play this one. What, what have you spoken about much at all um, within the group this week about what this game's about? Maybe you know, talking with someone like Torhu Harris, who's played a lot of games for you know, he's played well, he's played a handful for the Warriors and a lot for the Storm as well. But what this game is all about and what it means to everyone. Yeah, we haven't um, we haven't touched on the importance of the game just yet. I feel like it's something that we're going to touch on a little later in the week. 
Yeah. Uh, today was actually our first day back at training, and it was more reviewing uh, the game on the weekend against the Cowboys. So mm. I think once we start to, you know, look at the storm in detail and prepare for what we're going to need to do to get over them on the weekend, I think it'll be a good opportunity for especially the young boys to understand how important this game is. And, you know, even being in Canberra, the capital of Australia, they've had a really big emphasis on, you know, making sure that that game was, was a big event. And, you know, the boys did know what the, the importance of that game was. So I'm really looking forward to it. And what's the chat internally with the teammate? Because obviously you're sitting uh, top four, pretty sure. Is it? Is yep. the chat really like, I mean, that's great, boys, but we, it's a long season. We can't get ahead of ourselves? Yeah, I think the, the, the feeling around the club is, you know, we are happy, you know, being, I think it's five wins, two losses. You know, that's a great start to the year. But if you look, if you look a little bit closer on the ladder, you know, you only... The teams outside the eight only two wins from being in the four or something. So mm. it's it's still a long season to go. If, if we're still inside the four, you know, back end of the year, and, you know, for us, we feel like we can do that. Then then we'll be cheering a little bit better. But yeah, the job's not done. We're we're happy with how we've started, but we we still feel like there's a lot more improvement that can be had. Yeah, well, you are right, mate. Like if it's that close at the moment, like if there's results across the weekend that don't go your way or go against you, like you could find yourself quickly either at the bottom of the top eight or, or possibly even out of it. That's how close it is at the moment. But a big month of football um, chance for, for the footy club. Of course, Melbourne Storm, uh, Tuesday, uh, Anzac Day, big clash, of course. But then you back it up um, on that Sunday, only a few days later against the Roosters. And then you take on uh, Penrith as well. Big month of footy coming up for your side. Yeah, a massive month of footy, and I think it's it's important to know the position that we're in at the moment and where we've got to go. But also, it's just as important to focus in the head. Yep. So I think that'll be our, our big focus leading into this weekend's game against the Storm is just purely focusing on them. And you know, nothing changes for us. It's about it's about ourselves. I sort of feel like a bit of a broken record, but it's. It really is the same message every week. Yeah. You know, focus on what we can control. Make sure we're doing everything that we can at training, and you know, preparing as best as we can, and the result will take care of itself. So that'll be the same um, mentality for myself, and I, I think it'll be a lot the, the same mentality for a lot of the boys. And uh, we'll get over this game and see how we're doing after that. Now, Chance, I scored one try for the Warriors. Do you ever bring it up in video sessions? <laughs> can be. <laughs> oh, but, well, if I'm being honest, I don't think they've um, they've spoken about how great of a player you were. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a reason yes. for that. Yes. I think there's a reason I'm, for I'm that. I'm waiting for the old boys weekend. I'm waiting for your invite. <laughs> I can't wait to see you on the oh, I think there's a reason, Chance. I think there's a reason why they haven't, mate. Absolute legend, mate. Thank you so much for coming on. And, brother, you know i a uh, huge supporter of your career, mate. So love seeing you go so well. Nah, thank you guys for having me on, on um, your guys' show and appreciate your guys' time as well. Good on your chance. There he is, the great chance. Awesome. One, one of the game's great blokes. Yep. One of the game's great blokes. Really, really love seeing him back in rugby league. And a little bit of footy trivia for you. Mm. If you go back to that grand final... I actually thought Chance was best on ground until he cramped up, and he ran for like 250 metres and killed it in that grand final. Yeah. Uh, we're going to head to a break after the break. We're going to start previewing the round, plus talk about huge topics like the great KP. He's back. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Time to see which young players are climbing up the Bailey ladder. Worksite trusted for over 60 years. What have you got, Smitty? Kempe, I'm just trying to... Where is my Bailey's ladder gone? It's gone. I used to have one right oh, here yeah. in the studio. It's disappeared. You're, you're absolutely right. It was someone's, in the corner there. Someone's nicked it. Oh, no. I've got a free Bailey's ladder. How good. Bonus. Anyway, uh, first nomination uh, for young player climbing the ladder. It was Raymond. Big Raymond to a Marlo Vianga from the Seagulls who, well, sub subsequently he's missing two games now for a shoulder charge. <laughs> <laughs> but up and up. Uh, aside from that, um, he's 22 year old. He ran for 100 meters, two tackle breaks, and a massive. Well, this is well massive hit on Will Warbrick, which it just absolutely thundered through uh, Brookvale Oval, and it was just a brutal game. And he was a big reason 
for the win against the Storm. Raymond, outstanding. Uh, second one was Edwin, Edward Cozzi um, from the Warriors against the Cowboys. He had one try, ran for 100 metres and three tackle breaks, going well over there for the Warriors. And uh, last nomination goes to Titans winger uh, Alofiana Khan Pereira. And another, he had another big, big game. Um, 21-year-old, he had two tries, ran for 161 metres and one line break against your boys, the Bronx. Oh. Wasn't enough, though. Big effort from the young man, but just it just wasn't enough in the end. Yeah, I mean, he is... When we talk about finishes, he actually reminds me a little bit of the Fox as a finisher. Or the Foxy. Yeah, Vala Fox. He mm-hmm. uh, really quick off the mark. One of the... A real, like, traditional winger. You know, yep. the smaller... You're there just to finish. Kind of like Alex Jolson. Yeah, fast as anything. Mm. Um, so I can't wait to see uh, Pereira kind of like round out his game as he gets more experience. Uh, but that was Bailey Ladders bringing safety and efficiency for works to the worksite for over 60 years. 60 years. Holy. Mm. You might see that uh, ladder in 60 years, Smithy. <laughs> oh, mate, get it back. Like, seriously. You can't take it out. Like, it's part of our ladders. set. Seriously. Oh, t- Tommy, can we get onto that, please, Tom? Yeah, just like we get on the schnitz each week. Oh, don't see. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, anyway, <laughs> fellas, wasn't it great to see the Seagulls' defence working? Lucky it wasn't 13 plus to Manly. Smithy, do you oh, think Oh, 13 was... plus. Oh. What's this 13 plus? What's that? It's a, it's a saying. Can you can someone fill me in? Am I, okay, am, so am I hiding under a rock? It's a it's a betting saying, 13 plus. So yeah, like, oh, I know, know what that means. Yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. but the reason why it, it's kind of... Um, Resurged in uh, popularity is so, uh, as you know, my friends Hello Sport, Tom and Eddie. Ah, uh, yes. Um, they came on bloke, and and they're <laughs> quite a um, they're quite a big names in rugby league now. <laughs> yes, yeah, say, I know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they say thirteen plus uh, quite a lot. Oh, right, just for yeah. any game. Yeah, well, yeah. It's like it's almost like an insult. Yeah, yeah. Thirteen plus. Oh, let's go. Oh, Broncos, thirteen plus. Yeah, yeah. Manly thirteen plus is 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 their saying. Yeah. So it's Hello Sport. Well, I've seen Let's a couple. Co- mate, I've seen a couple of um, I've seen a couple of shirts like people walking around with like Manly thirteen plus on, where like That's on their them. shirts and on their on their jumpers at Brookie the other day. I was like, what's? Am I missing something here? Nah, that's Hello Sport. So oh, the Hello Sport boys. There you go. There you go. Got a, pl- so, got a yeah, plug on mate. the captain's run. Well done. Well done, boys. And go have a listen. They got a YouTube as well, Hello yep. Sport, and they've also got an Instagram and a punters and dribblers group. Um, but we're going to head to a break. After the break, get to your texts and your calls. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. We've got a 1,000 texts there, Smithy. Any texts you want to read out there? Um, well, I've got one here, mate. With more teams slowly coming into the NRL, should there be a top nine? With the minor mm. premiers having the week off and teams two to nine play week one of the finals. So I'm assuming, okay. I'm assuming the... So whoever team nine plays against... Um, whoever loses that game is out because you can't just keep going with odd numbers. You know what I mean? Mm. I actually, I got a sum and shoot me down, Smithy. But I reckon this is be, okay. You know, you get to the end of the year, yep. and there's a bunch of bludger games because it don't they don't mean anything. They can't make the eight. Yes. What if we did a top eight with a ninth wild card? So towards oh. the end of the year, the bottom eight sides are fighting for that wild card spot in the finals. Wow. So it's, it's like a top nine, but you get eliminated in that top nine battle all the right. way through. That'll make it interesting Ooh, for those teams anyway. that, are, that are sort of no chance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Keep the fans engaged, Wild everything card. like that. Wild card. Anyway, we're going to uh, head to a break, and after our break, we've got the round eight preview. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. We are here for Chemist Warehouse. Head into Chemist Warehouse for great savings every day. And Spitwater, Spitwater high-pressure cleaners, tools, not toys, tough and ready. Let's preview our game of the round thanks to Suncorp, building a more resilient Queensland. That's the Suncorp spirit. Rabbitohs v Panthers. Colin Matongi, out. Michael Cheekham will start a second row. Isaac Thompson returns on the wing. For the Panthers, Scotty Sorensen replaces Liam Martin in second row. Lindsay Smith is the new man on the bench. How do you see this playing out, Smithy? Yeah, that, no doubt. Um, this is the game of the round. Rabbitohs, huge win last week, although um, took them a little bit to get going, Kempi. Mm. But, you know, talking with Cody Walker post-game, that was, well, it was the plan. It was the mindset um, to, that they took into that match Um against the Dolphins was that well, let's play long game let's we're not trying to go out there and 
you know, trick our way to early points. Let's let's try and just stick with them. They're going to apply pressure early to us, which they did. They they started on fire, the Dolphins. Yeah. But uh, they just wore them down, wore them down, um, ended up scoring plenty in the end. Um, and when they're, when they're in that form, the Bunnies, they're, they look as good as any team of the comp. And, and and on their day, you think, well, this is a team that can win this competition. Yeah, like they could beat Penrith, mm. they could beat Melbourne, they could beat the Warriors, who are you know sitting top four at the moment. They can beat Cronulla, like all these sides that sort of everyone's sort of tossing up as premiership contenders. But on their day, like when when they find their rhythm and they play with confidence, and particularly you know Walker and Latrell Mitchell have heavy involvement, they they're as good as any side. Um, coming up against the Panthers, they they just know how to win. They're, at the moment, they're just they're not particularly playing their best footy. I don't think you know, I don't think anyone would disagree with me there. But they just know how to win footy games. They get in these situations where close at the end, find a play that they need to find, score the points. Um, they've got a, a a great player in Nathan Cleary who doesn't get flustered in those tight situations. He can find field goals. He can find. Um, you know, conversions or penalty goals when they're needed, and they just get it done. Um, so this is this is a really tough one because if the if Penrith allow them, as I said before, if they allow them allow the Rabbitohs a bit of momentum and give them that momentum and they can score a few points, they may they may be able to jag a win this week. Mm. Uh, yeah, I find it really interesting the comments from Cody Walker. You know, as you just said when you spoke to him. Basically, you know, it was a part of the plan. Mm. And I actually, it changes my view on the whole match now because I said on my podcast earlier this week, I was like, first half, I'm sitting there watching the Rabbitohs going, these, these guys are not <laughs> What's premiership doing? threats. Yeah, these aren't premiership <laughs> yeah. threats. I was thinking the same thing, yep. And then the second half, I'm going, oh my God, the Rabbitohs could win the comp. Yep. But it's interesting for Cody to come out and say, no, this was the plan. We stayed patient. Mm. I actually really like that because that's the one thing the Rabbitohs have really struggled with yep. is they don't just get through their sets and build pressure. Yep. You're right. I don't really think they've been close to their best. And there has been some chinks in their armor. Um, and I wonder whether Rabbitohs, if they can be patient enough, can exploit those. Because the difference between the Knights... And look, I understand the Panthers played one of their worst games. I mean, I think at one point they had 50% completion after like 30 minutes. It was terrible. But I wonder whether Rabbitohs take confidence from that and go, look, let's get in the grind with the Panthers because the difference between us and the Knights, we can put on points really quickly, you know, quite easily. Mm. Um, so the only thing are going against the Rabbitohs at the moment, though, is you're going to have a very angry Panther side going, hey, boys, that was not good enough. Yep. Wake up call. Yeah, and and if you think back to um, like this, these guys have they've they've played each other already this year. Um, I, I think they they played each other round two, I think it was. Um, and in that occasion, Penrith come away with a sixteen ten victory, and those points that Penrith scored, they were scored early. Mm. So it's okay to it's okay to have this mentality. Um, going into games about, you know, playing the long game, really just trying to grind a match away. But remembering, just remember who you're playing as well. And maybe if that tactic is the right tactic. Mm. We, we spoke earlier, Kempi, about Penrith and their their defensive um, strength. They've conceded the least amount of points of any team in this competition this year. So they're pretty stingy. So when the Bunnies get their opportunities down in Penrith and this weekend, whether it be set starts or, you know, loose ball turnover, whatever it is, that's when uh, uh, the likes of Cody Walker, um, Latrell Mitchell, Lachlan Ilias, who's having a fantastic season, Damian Cook as well, they that's when they need to go to work. Yeah. They, they, they can't just think, they can't just think, oh, you know, like we'll just, oh, we'll just get through our set. Maybe if an opportunity presents itself, um, yeah, you know, hopefully we can get some points out of it. You need to be thinking, how are we going to pull this Panthers team apart? Because mm. we need to get we we. It'd be nice. It'd be a really good position to be in if you can apply some pressure on the scoreboard early to Penrith. Yeah, it's a really good point. I mean, it's, it's, as you said, when you look back at their other game, you know, it was the Rabbitohs that finished strong and were coming home 
uh, and it ended up being quite a close game. So mm. I cannot wait for the match of the round. On to the Eels versus the Broncos, Friday 8 p.m. at TIO Stadium in Darwin. Uh, I'm going to back your boys again here. Yes, yeah, Smithy. Yeah, yeah. They've, uh, they've, I've had, I've been a little bit, a little bit critical of them mm. over the past couple of weeks. Just, just some things I've seen in their game that they need to try and stay on top of. Of course, we we talk about this a lot about winning. Sort of, it it masks a few deficiencies in your games at times. Mm. Uh, but you just got to be disciplined enough to stay on top of things. Um, but a, a really strong victory uh, the other night against the Titans. A couple of big ins. Tommy Flegler um, and Corey Oates. Like, Corey Oates' form to start the year was outstanding. Yeah. Like, I'm talking form of, like, getting picked on the wing for Queensland type of form. Yep. Um, it was that kind of stuff. And he's come back. Has he only missed, what, four weeks? Five weeks? Mate, five max. Yeah. Hasn't been long. Yeah. Hasn't been long. Yeah. Like, it, it's... um. Hasn't been long for that broken jaw, so he's a quick healer. Um, so big in for um, them. I, I just think too strong up in uh, up in Darwin. This one's in Darwin. It's going to be nice and warm. That's one thing we'll know. Uh, Josh Hodson back for Para. Look, they played really well. They, they, we've been seeing some uh, some some better football from Parramatta. Still, still though, just a little bit inconsistent for mine. Um, Moses has been stronger since you know making that decision to sign on, and all that drama's out the way. Um, he's certainly been playing better, but I just think the the confidence that the Broncos are carrying at the moment it'll get them across the line against Para. This is a, this is uh, going to be I'm I'm a bit on the fence. Oh, with this hang, one. hang on a minute, because what? I mean, obviously, I'm back in the Broncos. I'm back in the Broncos. <laughs> Let's just just be clear. <laughs> but if I'm the Eels, my game plan is, boys, all we have to do is complete it over eighty five percent, and we'll win the game. Mm. I just can't see a world, unless obviously Broncos completed 85%. Yeah. But I can't see a world where if the Eels completed at 85%, they don't win the game because Broncos have shown a tendency yep. to, to go through halves and complete at like 60 to 65%. Yep. Last week, even with their win, it was just a 73% completion rate. Yeah, that's right. And they, they managed to do that against a Titans squad um, and all the other teams they've played outside of Penrith on paper aren't as strong as this eel side. Yep. So if I'm Brad Arthur and I, I'm the eels players, I'm sitting down and going, boys, look on paper what we have. Look what's happened in the last five weeks with the Broncos. All we need to do is apply pressure by completing the ball and keeping it out of their hands. Yeah. Um, and they can get the job done. Yep. On the flip side of that with the Broncos, it's it's almost the same message. It's look how good our roster is, guys. Yeah. Look what we did in the second half against the Titans. Let's just build pressure, please. Let's stop trying to score points. Like, and so if I'm Kevy, I'm just saying, boys, first ten sets of the game, let's complete at you know ninety percent, just for the first ten sets. Lay ourselves a platform, yeah, to win the match. And it's and it's going to be crucial, right? This game's being played in Darwin. It's going to be it's going to be muggy. It's going to be sweaty. The ball's going to be really greasy. So you'd like to think that whoever you know holds the ball and finishes the game with the most completions. They they should come away with the win. Although the Broncos they've bucked that trend. Excuse the pun, Buck. Get it, Broncos. Uh, <laughs> they've bucked that trend a couple of times this year, where they've they've actually finished the game with the lower completion rate with the opposition. But uh, but just through their sheer brilliance, they've come up with some big plays to to win the match. But certainly when you're playing against quality opposition like Parramatta, I think two two things for Parra, Kempi. One, they need to high completions, as you said. That that would go a long way to win in this game too, um, but they they really need to take it to the Brisbane the starting ruck for Brisbane. Mm. They really need to take it to them. Um, Payne Haas in fantastic form at the moment. Paddy Carrigan playing some good footy as well. Is Flegler going to start or are they going to start him off the bench? Is he coming straight back into the starting side? Um, Jensen moves to the bench. I yeah, there you go. So the side. so Flegler will go back in, and you know Flegler's a high energy. You know, very aggressive. Got great line speed. Gets gets sort of bit of builds momentum for uh, the Broncos. If if you know RCG um, Junior Bolo, if those guys can can really minimise the impact that those middle forwards have on the game early on, that that will put them in a very good position to try and beat this Broncos side. Yeah, I mean it, it's one of the most mouth watering forwards clashes you'll see all year. RCG Junior Bolo versus Tom Flegler. 
and Haas with Carrigan at 13. It just yeah. honestly does not get better than that. Well, it's it's almost a um, it's a preview to State of Origin. It's all yeah. it's, it's the New South Wales and Queensland sort of middle forwards. Yeah, absolutely. Playing absolutely. with and against each other, of course. So um, now we're going to head to a break, and after the break, we'll continue our round preview. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Let's talk about the Doggies versus Sharks. Saturday, 5.30 at a course stadium. Yeah, big move. Um, Burton to halfback. I'll tell you, here's a little stat for you, fellas. He's played halfback once in his career. That wow. was in round three for Penrith in 2021 against the Storm. He wore number 19. So just his second game playing number seven. Um, of course, you know, that's his role now is to steer this team around the park, which you don't typically sort of look at Matt Burton and think, well, he's he's a bloke that, that plays that role. He, he likes sort of standing a little bit wider, looks for opportunities out there, and when he wants the ball, he gets it. But interesting to see how that goes. Um, Kyle Flanagan, of course, back in, in six. No changes to the Sharkies. Um, I, I think they'll be looking to, to win this game and win it well. Bulldogs have just been absolutely pulverised by injuries. Pulverised. Um, and, you know, to the likes where, you know, you're talking with or hearing Cameron Serraldo talk, the head coach of the Bulldogs, just saying oh, he just has not seen anything like this in his career, both as a player and in his, in his um, short career as a coach where so many guys are out. They've still got a fairly strong forward pack. Like, let's not forget about that. They've they've got a, a pretty decent forward pack, um, played a, a fair bit of NRL. There's a fair bit of NRL experience between the group that are starting in particular, um, some younger guys off the bench. But um, I, I think with the, with the form that the Sharks have shown us over the last you know sort of three weeks, particularly with Nico Hines back, I think I think they'll be looking to win this one quite well. You don't want to go into it thinking, oh, the Doggies have got all these injuries. And I, I would personally, if I'm a coach, I would rather the Sharkies win 8-0, 10-0, 12-0 than... 34 to 16. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, and so I, I hope that the Sharkies with this, their goal is, is really not about attack. They know they can score points. So no, let's not even really even think about it. Let's just think about our only focus is our defense. Um, with the doggies, on the other hand, look, it's just a real opportunity to, to test yourself as a player and as an individual through a tough time. You know, like challenge the players. Say, like, okay, yeah, we've got a bunch of players out. But do you all aspire to be first graders? Do you all aspire to, to be better over the next few years? Well, this is your chance. This is your chance. Um, and I think the Doggies, although they've had some tough losses over the last week, I think they've been really gallant, especially for at least halves of footy. So I, I, yeah. I don't... I think they'll trouble the Sharks at least for the... I think they'll give it to them for a, the first half, but I, I do mm-hmm. think the Sharkies just be a bit too much for yeah, them. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, mate. I think the Sharks, their attitude for this one, they need to... They need to take this game on with a ruthless mentality and just not worry about, you know, who who's not there for the dogs and think about all oh, the inexperience and all this sort of stuff. Just turn up to this match like you're playing Penrith or you're playing the Storm or the Rabbitohs or whoever it is that you feel as though is the benchmark of the competition and, and play the game that you'd play against them, against these guys. Mm. Really do that, and and there's some things that they haven't done so uh, so well over the last couple of weeks as well. Although they've won a couple of games, the Sharkies like they're three and three, right? It's it, the, the 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 dogs have actually won the same amount of games as the Sharkies have. They've yeah. both got the three wins. So don't take don't as you said, mate. Don't take the this team too lightly. Go in there with that ruthless attitude as as you would against some of the the teams sitting on top of the ladder. Mm. Yeah, and and don't squander such a big win last week because that's what you do if you lose if you if you don't play well this week. Yeah, the great win against Roosters means absolutely zero. Yep, only as good as your last effort, mate. Absolutely. Now we will head to the Cowboys' night Saturday, seven thirty-five, Queensland Country Bank Stadium. What do you reckon, Smithy? This could be a season-defining game for the Cowboys. Oh, mate, I really ever. think so. Like they're sitting yeah. second last at the moment. Their big dog, Jason Tamalolo, their leader, he's out. A um, couple of good ins, though, um, of course. Um, Jordan Mac- Jordan McLean, he's back. Um, been out for a little bit. I think ham or hamstring or calf injury, I think he may have had. Ruben Cotter, he replaces Tamalolo at lock. He's just a, we all know what Ruben's about. He doesn't let you down every week. Yep. Um, but the Knights, the Knights, they've been 
although losing last week to Penrith, they've been super impressive, particularly with the, the way they play with like that toughness. They've we've seen a bit of resilience about their football over the last couple of weeks, which I've been super impressed by. Led by, can I mention how good is Tyson Frizzell playing? Oh, like mate. Tyson Frizzell is just playing some wonderful footy at the moment. Another guy we had on the show yeah. only a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> just, I'm telling you, that Tommy, they'll be knocking down the door to get on, on the captain's run. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we've, we've had to knock them back. We've got that many players asking to come on. But um, The captain's run blessing rather yeah, than a curse. Yeah, I know. They all want to be on this show. Um <laughs> You know, with the way this Knights side is playing, it is a danger game. Even even with the Cowboys playing at home, it is a danger game. Absolute danger game for them. KP, um, great to see him back uh, playing rugby league again, been out for um, several weeks. A lot of eyes will be on this game, just particularly to see how he travels. Uh, first game back from um, the concussion stuff that kept him out for a while. Funnily enough, or ironically, he plays his 100th NRL game against the team where he start, where it all started for him, Kempi. Wow. At the Cows. Yep. So big one for him going back up to the place he called home for a long, long time. Mm. Um, with Just going off recent form, I'm, I'm leaning towards Knights. Mate, I'm with you. I'm leaning I'm towards Knights. You. I, you know, uh, my the people listen to Bloke Podcast hate me because I keep saying it. <laughs> but I, I uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, they played the Dolphins and they they leaked in, you know, I think it was like twelve to sixteen points in the last ten minutes. Yep. Anyway, on my podcast, I was like, look, it's it's just not good enough. It's disappointing, um, really disappointing performance. And there were a few nice fans that felt, hang on a sec, like, um, you know, we've had injuries, rah rah. And I think that the Knights have proven that they're much more than what we've given them credit for to start this year, especially last week. Even though their completion rate wasn't great, mm. I think Adam O'Brien deserves a massive rap because at the moment, when you look at the, look at the table, like they've, they've been without Braley, Ponga, uh, all their stars. The Knights are currently sitting on seven points. They are one win outside the eight. Yep. If, you, if, you said, if you said right now for the Knights... They were full strength from round one to seven, and they were one win outside the eight. Everyone would say that that's a pretty solid start from Adam O'Brien. Mm. He's managed to do that with an absolute schmozzle of injuries. <laughs> and I think that they deserve a massive rap for their turnaround, um, you know, over the last few weeks of showing not only grit, but I think they're showing identity now. They've just got this identity of mm. they're building a new kind of... Um, I guess, character there. So I, I really like what's happening at the Knights. I can't wait for them to be full strength. In regards to the Cowboys, it is absolutely now or never. If they can't get this job done, if they can't get a win, I just can't see them making the eight. And you can clip it up, and at the end of the year, if they're in the eight, <laughs> I'm happy to say, <laughs> mate, I'm more than happy to say, got it wrong. Got it wrong. Got it wrong. Yep. But it's it's now or never for the Cowboys because, look, we're, we're heading into, what, round eight? Yep. They're going to lose Cotter. They're going to lose uh, maybe Reese Robson. They're going to lose Nanai. Um, Nanai. So, so they're going to lose that on top of Dearden. Tamalolo. Dearden. Tamalolo will most likely still be out, at least for Origin 1. Yep. It's not going to get easier. Val Holmes, Murray Torlangi. Yep. It is not going to get easier. And so you need to bank up wins now because not only has their draw not been that hard, the draw is going to get harder for them. Mm. Um. And so it ha- it has to be now. It has to be now. I agree with you, mate. It's it's such an important game for them. Just, mate, just find some confidence. Get some mm. confidence back. Get that get that winning feeling back. Yeah. And and use use, you know, not saying that you know, not, home field advantage is very different to what it used to be back in the day, right? Because they're going up there to Townsville. Um, they're playing at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. It's a lo- lovely, brand new venue. Flashy, shiny. So everyone's comfortable, right? Everyone's comfortable going and playing at these new stadiums, but they've got their home crowd there. Mm. Use that, use that to your advantage, boys, and yeah. just try and get that feeling back of winning. What it's like, what you're doing well when you're winning. That that's that's what it's all about. That's what the Cowboys need to find again. And, and it's similar to what we said about the Dragons a few weeks ago. Like I think the Cowboys, you know, when you look at the stats and you actually look at their completion rate, it's it's actually pretty good. Like it's actually decent. And so you go, they're doing the, the, they're ticking the boxes, yep. which is good. Yep. 
but I guess they've got to sit there across from each other and say, boys, do we love what we do? Do we love what we, let's just go out there and for 80 minutes, everything out, everything outside of that, it does not matter. Don't worry about training next week. Don't worry about anything. For 80 minutes, let's just love our footy together. Yep. Um, it done. sounds really cliche and corny or whatever, but it really does come down to that. Just go get it done. Go get it done. We're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got plenty more matches to preview. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. We've got the Dolphins v. the Titans Sunday, 2 p.m. at Suncorp Stadium. Mm. Uh, Dolphin team news. Felice Corfusi returns for suspended Kenny Bromwich. Jared Wallace returns from concussion. Titans, AJ Brimson, the most arrogant man in rugby league, is named in the reserves. Uh, Jojo for feet up, comes into the wing. <laughs> Bill Sammy moves to the centres, and Aaron Shop has been dropped. Uh, Thomas McKayley and Cleese Haas are the new faces on the bench. What do you reckon about this one, Smitty? What, what's, what's, what's going on with Brimo? Most I, arrogant. He's a, I just, he's a mate, and I just like to put it on. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Most arrogant man in the game. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, we're just, it seems like we're having derbies left, right, and center with the, with the new Queensland side, the Dolphins, in, in the comp. Um, so good. It's, it's outstanding. Love it. At uh, Suncorp and Sunday afternoon footy. How good is it playing Arbo footy? It'll be not, well, hopefully filthy. nice and dry. Actually, there's a, there's a little bit of rain around um, in Queensland, mm. which um, hopefully it doesn't take away from this great contest because both teams, they, they don't mind throwing the footy around a little bit and they've played in some high-scoring matches so far this year. The hitman, Felice Cafusi, um, he's back... <laughs> He's back for the first time. He's been out for, oh, it feels like half a year, but um, he returns for the Dolphins. I think they will uh, re- get him back with open arms. Mm. Uh, Kenny Bromwich suspended. Jared Wallace back. Um, it's I find it hard right now to to go against the Dolphins. Yeah? It doesn't matter who they're playing. I, I just find it hard to say, oh, look, they can't win because they just – I tell you what, like outside of Penrith, who have been doing it for a long, long time, when I look across the competition, I don't think there's any other side, as I said, outside of Penrith. When I watch them play, every player, they just they know exactly what the game plan is. Mm. Every player, it doesn't matter who they play against, because they play a, a a very, very similar style every week, no matter the opposition. Yeah. But they all know what the game plan is. They all know exactly what their role is in the footy side, and they just go out and do it. Mm. They go out and do it. And we talk about teams, you know, completing and putting pressure on the opposition. That's what the Dolphins are actually quite good at. Mm. They're not going to beat you with, you know, flash footy and all these, you know, fan dangle, like set plays and all that sort of stuff. Sure, they've got some game breakers in their footy side. Um, You know, that that can do that. The hammer being one, Jermaine Asako, of course. Those two players, I think they're, they're still atop of the the NRL uh, competition for tries scored. Um, certainly Jermaine Osako is he's the top point scorer at the moment. But what they do is they will break you down. They will break you down through just continuous pressure, holding onto the footy, getting down the other end, making their tackles, um, helping their teammates out. So it's really hard to knock the Dolphins on that front. Um, whereas the Titans, they can be, they can be hit and miss. Mm. Absolutely hit and miss. Like I, I, I sat and uh, watched the Titans play against the Melbourne Storm, just as a as a fan in in the stands down here at the Gold Coast. Mm. And you know they had some some patches through that game that weren't great. You know they were dropping the footy, they were making simple errors. But when they when they got their stuff together, they really gave the Storm some issues. Mm. And and when you talk about Melbourne Storm, they're one of the best defensive teams in the comp as far as, you know, the the way they defend their structures and their systems, but they broke them down. Mm. So when they are like that, they, they're as, as good as most in the competition. But going off, you know, consistency, I, I reckon the Dolphins will, will get this one. Wow, Dolphins for the win. Mm. Oh, it's a tough one. Because I agree with you. The good thing about the Dolphins is, it's like, you know what you're going to get from them. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's bought in. Yeah. Everyone's bought in. Uh, where the Titans, you know, one half a game, you get them dominating the Broncos, and yep. then the next half, it's thirty-six points or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, it's so, 
Oh, I'm, I'm going to back the Titans because I do. I have seen signs of improvement of that. Um, they're still not obviously where I think they 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 could be with their roster. I think Brimo being back does help them quite a bit. But I, I, what I love about the Dolphins is they've just such sent such a strong message to the rest of the comp, where this excuse of like, oh, we don't have the roster, it just really isn't. It's not feasible really anymore. Like this is a, a Dolphin side that it it's got experienced veterans with some youth, and it's had injuries in key positions, and yet aside from one match, has always turned up and made it competitive. Mm. They've gone out and they've beaten the team that came third last year, and the Cowboys have gone out and beaten the Roosters. So I, I just I love that they almost remind you why you love rugby league, where it's a team sport. It's mm. not an individual sport. It's about buying in. It's about being on the same game plan. And that's what the Dolphins have done this year. So I agree with you, mate. I love the pressure that they build. And they almost dare you. They almost dare you to say, we'll, we'll go all day. We dare you to try and beat us and make mistakes. And then we capitalize on it. Um, so cannot wait for this match. Now on to the next one. Tigers versus Sea Eagles. Tigers had a bye last week. Adam Dewey out for the season. Naden out for two to three weeks. Uh, Bula makes his NRL debut at fullback. Staines moves to the wing. Kapoa goes to centre. Tommy Talau and Dane Laurie are the new players on the bench. Siegel, Schuster, Garrick both return from injury. Ethan Bullymore starts at second row for Tuolangi. Sam, uh, Samuela Fainu has been named on the bench for his NRL debut. Uh, we'll have to get Tommy to check this, but what's the stat for teams post by? Off the mm. top of my head, I think I think it's just Penrith have lost after the bye. I don't know if that's yep. still intact. It, it is that's still correct. intact. So yep. I don't know. Is this is this the week we see the Tigers get their first win? Coming off a bye, of course. Um, you know, big out though, Adam Dewey. You can't sort of you know forget about that. Out for the season. He's out for a long, long time. Actually, Brent Naden, of course, as well. Um, maybe that takes away from their point scoring opportunities. The Manly were just. They were so good. They were so good last week. And you sort of, you look at it and go, well, boys, like, why can't we, why can't you produce that every week? Yeah. I just don't know. Like, can you only do it for half the year when you're playing at Brookie? Mm. You know, and, and you hear all the players. Like, I heard them talk post-game last week about, you know, Brookie being their fortress and they love playing in front of their home friend, home fans. And when teams come here, they're going to pay. Well, boys, play that way away from home as well. Mm. Because the last time I checked, like the NRL Grand Final will not be played at Four Pines Park. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to win the big ones, you've got to be able to produce those same performances away from Brookvale. So um, I'm going to back Manly. Uh, I just think way too strong for Tigers. There's nothing that, that, that is sending me any sort of signs that um, they're going to be out, able to beat Manly uh, this week, and particularly with a couple of big outs as well in their back line. I, I think this is this is a Manly victory. Yeah, mate, this is a confusing one for the Tigers because I thought Charlie Staines was literally one of their best players last week. Mm. Oh, sorry, the week before. Yeah. And now he's been moved to the wing again. Yep. And so I just don't understand what is happening and look, they, they clearly have way more information than me in regards to selections, and they know the players and rah rah. Yep. But you know, in the preseason, we heard whispers that Staines may be in front of Laurie to get the fullback position. Yep. Then Laurie starts at fullback. Then Dewey gets moved back there, and then Staines comes on the wing, and then Staines gets moved back there, plays really well. Now Staines has been moved to the wing, and they're going to debut another guy at fullback, yeah. um, Jar Jarum Bula. And I'm just like, it's almost like they're getting in their own way, like just keep some players in key positions for longer than a few matches yeah. and build some combinations. Because like, now it's like, all right, well, is the plan that Bull is your fullback for 2023? Are you yeah. going to keep him there? Like, I don't, I don't understand. What, 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 what's happened with Dane Laurie? Just on, just on the outer. Just, just yeah, not, just not in favour with the, with the coaching staff? Because I, yeah. thought, I thought he was... Was he not one of their best players last year? 100%. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's a really confusing move. Like I, I thought, if Charlie Staines was to be moved out of that position of fullback, I thought, well, Laurie just goes straight back there. Mm. That that that's the position that he's in right now at that football club. That they're naming a debutant in front of him after five lots, what five or six losses? Yeah, you know, like six. 
oh mate, it's just I just don't un- and like you've got Tommy Talao and Laurie on the bench, so you got two outside backs on the. It, I just yeah. Why not keep Staines at fullback? Tommy Talao goes into the centre. Kapoa goes to the wing where he's anyway. <laughs> Maybe overthinking it. Um, oh, <laughs> Possibly. Who knows, mate? Know. It's it's hard. Like we we speculate, right? Because yeah. we're not there. We're not at training. We don't know what's going on. But the obvious one from the outside looking in is you just you put Dane Laurie back there. Yeah. Uh, if 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 you're going to move Staines, like yeah. if, even yes. though I thought Staines was great. Anyway, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got the last games of the round to preview. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. Some quick text here, Smithy, that we like. Yeah, we've got a couple of good ones. This is from Mick from in Margaret River, over way over there in WA. Yeah, boys, someone is getting kafusied oh, this yeah. weekend. Can't wait. And and Mick is a Titan supporter. Love how he's hitting at the moment. Um, good on you, Mick, all the way from WA. Yep. Um, and this one from Willow is a good one. Since Frizz was on the show, he, he's performed out of this world. Boys, I've got a date with a woman on Friday night. I need to get on your show ASAP because it seems like a great <laughs> recipe to good performance. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Willow. All mate, the best, I mate. I love it. All the best, mate. Honestly, oh, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine when it comes to women, brother. Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> good luck. Hope it goes well Friday, mate. Yeah, mate, uh, let's get to the games. Roosters v. Dragons, Anzac Day Clash. Always a cracker. Obviously, Walker dropped. Manu to 5'8", Kiri to halfback. Momorowski starts to centre. Cry and Satili Tupanua have been mm. named for their first games of 23. Nathan Brown, his name in reserves, could play his first game for the Roosters. Dragons. Murdoch Masilla starts at second row. Sewer is out. How do you see this game playing out? Smith? Well, always a big occasion, of course. This is uh, Anzac game, traditional Anzac game. Roosters v. Dragons in Sydney. Um, hopefully, everyone has a, a really enjoyable um, match and enjoys the ceremonies at the start. Big game for both sides, different reasons. Roosters really need to get their season going. Like Everyone talking about them being premiership contenders. Haven't seen it from them since early rounds of the year. Couple of big names coming back. Angus Crichton, of course. Great to see him fit and, and going well again. Satili so Tupanua as well. Um, we spoke about Sam Walker being out. Interested to see how Manu um, goes in the halves and what they do in the centres, whether it's Momorowski or Drew Hutchinson playing there. We'll probably see a late call made by... Uh, Trent Robinson for the Dragons um, boys just got to get out there and perform well a lot of pressure on the club at the moment there's a lot of pressure on your coach because of the results and and we spoke with Ben Hunt at the start of the year didn't we mate and he spoke about how the playing group is right behind Anthony Griffin boys get out there and perform well for your coach this week that's all mm-hmm. Yeah, mate, I totally agree in regards to the Dragons. You just got to get out. If you if you do love your coach and you do back him, unless you do something special this week, it's going to get tougher and tougher for him to be around, unfortunately. Mm. Um, in regards to the Roosters, it's got to start soon. That, um, yes, yes, they are. They've put themselves in a good position to make that top four, but you know, the Roosters have to make the top four this year if they want to win the comp. It's really. Now they're an anonym. They may be the first team ever to win outside the outside the eight, and I, I think you go back like maybe twenty years to the last time it happens. But statistically speaking, you've got to be the top four. So Roosters, if I'm the Roosters um, players and, and coach or whatever, let's go out and make a statement, a statement game. Welcome back to the captain's run, Smitty. What do you think about Storm v the Warriors? Well, I was lucky enough to play in many, many of these games. Uh, the Anzac game, obviously, in Melbourne. And they do such a great job, the Melbourne Storm, at Amy Park, presenting this game, particularly all the uh, pre-game ceremonies. They turn the lights off and they both teams walk out. Uh, look, oh, I think this is going to be a ripping game. This could be close to the match of the round, I believe, yeah. um, with the form that the Warriors are in right now. Storm, they're looking to bounce back from a, a performance that they weren't great. Munster back to six, I think, will help. Look, I'm, I'm going to back my old team, the Storm, um, but I think this will be a really, really close one, Kempi. Wouldn't surprise me if it goes all the way to Golden Point. Yeah, look, I'm going to back Storm, but I tell you what, if Warriors want to send a message that we're legit, the real oh. deal, could you imagine? Could you imagine? Now, what is your sure thing for the week brought to you by... Um, sure, oh, th- sure higher. Sure thing. Uh, mate, I'm going to go Manly. You're going to go, oh, that was going to be mine. That's How dare you, sir? And that's soft. Okay, okay. That's soft. Um, so our share, the temporary work expert, experts, surehire.com.au. Surehire Australia's most complete shoring, propping, and traffic product. 
I am going to go my sure thing, the Roosters. Oh, the, the roosters. roosters. Yeah, I'm going the Roosters. Look Tommy's up. just dropped their head. Yeah. Put the mock on them. Let's go. Put the mock on them. Uh, You'll yeah. be right, Tommy. Come on, mate. Uh, look, the Roosters are better than that. I, I, look, honestly, I thought the Roosters fans are a bit stronger than that, but clearly they don't have much faith in their side. But yeah. that's okay. There you that's go. okay. Yep. Uh, look, that is us done and dusted for the week. Make sure you can download us uh, on any good podcasting app, The Captain's Run. Apple and Spotify. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at SCN League. Uh, the Captain's Run on Twitter as well, Captain's Run NRL. Also, download the app, SCN app. We've got plenty of great shows. Some of the best talent in the country. Matty Johns, Brian Fletcher, Greg Alexander, the great Cam Smith. Also, a bloke named The Beak. Easy too. <laughs> Um, anyway, as we are oh, actually, for all of our listeners, we might see you on Magic Round at the Caxon at 1 p.m. Ooh. But anyway, we'll see you next week. See ya.